The following program is a UNC Charlotte production. Welcome inside UNC Charlotte. The Charlotte 49ers kicked off their inaugural football season on August 31st. We'll look back on that first day and ask students and alumni what it meant to them. We'll learn more about UNC Charlotte's entry in the Solar Decathlon competition for 2013 and the final project called Urban Eden. Throughout today's program, we'll hear from university donors and scholarship recipients to learn how donations to the university make direct impacts on student learning. Plus, we'll learn about the first number 49 football jersey in Charlotte 49ers history. All this and more inside UNC Charlotte. August 31st, 2013. That was a historic day here at UNC Charlotte. 49ers football kicked off its inaugural season. We walked the campus that morning to take in all the sights and sounds of tailgating and pregame events. Along the way, we asked students and alumni what that day meant to them. I'm here with Chris Barbie, who is a graduate of the, um, of the College of Engineering and Engineering Technology degree in 2001. Mm -hmm. And Chris, I understand you had a little bit longer commute than some of us to get to the game today. Can you tell me a little about that? I uh, started last night around 11 o'clock, um, left my house in Inverness, Florida, 534 miles to here. Got here in Charlotte around 7 o'clock this morning. Now why was it that you were, uh, that you were leaving so late? Uh, my oldest son, his, this is his senior year and uh, he's a football player and uh, you know, can't miss that game. So. And so what happened with the game? 42-13, uh, they won. So then why was it so important for you to get back here since you had that personal commitment down in Florida? Because I've been waiting a long, long time for this. So I was not going to miss this game, that is for sure. So now how much, you, how much do you think you'll be able to make it up here for games? Uh, we've slated probably around four games this year. So what, do you have any prediction for the game today? Mmm, 49 nothing, just like the Chancellor said. Well, I, I think that makes a lot of sense. That's great. Well, thank you so much for being with us. I hope you have a great time, and I think we can all say Go Niners! Go Niners! Let's go Charlotte! Let's go Charlotte! You would think being clear across campus from Jerry Richardson Stadium and all the action that student tailgating would be a little less exciting, but these 49ers would tell you you would be absolutely wrong. All right, Olivia, what's your motivation for being out here today? We're making history. How can you not be out here? So the tailgating <laughs> area, what did you contribute? I made a bean and black bean and corn dip. So we'll see if they like it. I don't know. <laughs> hey, you brought something. Yeah. So that's the first rule. You, you pass in my book. All right, Matul, you're a junior. Your student fees have paid for this moment. Absolutely. What does it mean to finally have UNC Charlotte football today? You know, it's just the fact that ever since I've been at this campus, we've had an issue of having people stay on campus. And on, on a Saturday, to see so many students get together for one, one purpose, it really does feel good. Awesome. And Mick, we have a full season to look forward to. You've been sweating like crazy because you're a grill master, and I'm not mad at that. Yeah, Are you going to be doing this every single home game? Every game. Whatever they throw me, I'll just put it on the grill and then give it back to them. They get happy, so. Awesome. Whatever. What organization are you with today? We're in SIGA. All five, right. So. so, you know, one more request. On the count of three, give me your loudest, proudest, let's go 49ers. Throw it up for me. One, two, three. Let's, let's go, go 49ers! Karen Revis. Karen, how are you I'm today? I'm great. Go Niners! <laughs> All right. So how are you connected with, with the school? I am an alumni from 1979. I All graduated right. from the school. I'm also on the uh, Alumni Association Board of Directors. Okay. And I'm out here to celebrate for football today. Okay, so it's safe to say you're a big 49er uh, fan. A big 49er okay. fan, absolutely. 
Well, what have you witnessed this morning walking around in the tailgate section? You know what? Everybody is out. Everybody's got smiles on their faces. They're tailgating. They're cooking. They're drinking. They're just celebrating. And everybody's got big smiles on their faces. So it's awesome. Well, speaking of, what are, what are your tailgating plans? What do you plan to do for the year? Well, we haven't worked that out yet. Today, we're going to savor the moment. We've been waiting for this for many years. So we're going to walk around, visit all the tailgates, the alumni tent, and everybody else, and just enjoy and savor the day. And then we'll figure it out from there. Okay. Well, enjoy yourself. Let's hear your best 49er cheer. Go Niners! Woo! I'm now here with Bill Brawley, who is a 1978 graduate. He has a bachelor's in accounting from UNC Charlotte. But more importantly, he's a big friend of ours on so many different levels, including he's a representative in the North Carolina House but also a huge supporter of the university. Bill, welcome. Thank you. Gosh, looking forward to this for years. So this is really exciting for alums like you as well to see oh, this you, come. You have no start. idea, have no idea at all how much fun it is to come out on game day. And I know you've got a daughter that's a student here now. That's right. She's an undergraduate in the School of Education. And uh, my wife is also an alum, class of 78. Well, that's wonderful. So uh -huh. this is a family affair. Absolutely. So you're planning to be here all season then for all the home I'm going to be as many as I can make. That's great. That's great. Well, we uh -huh. really appreciate that. So, so tell me what the thing is that you're looking the most forward to today, since you've been dreaming about this so long. Look, it's all raving. There's absolutely nothing that's going to happen today that's not going to be good. If we come out and do great and have a big win, super. And if we don't, still, super. We're in the game. We're here. And it's about time. For all the guys on television today watching this, go Niners! Go Niners! Thank you very Thank you, much, Bill. Bye -bye. with Richard Hudson, who is a U.S. Uh, congressman representing the area, but more importantly, he's a UNC Charlotte grad and a big 49er fan. Hello, Richard. How are you? I'm great. What a terrific day to be a 49er. It really is. Now, I understand you have a little bit of history here with the athletics groups. Well, when I was student vice president, I was able to break the ground for the new student activity center uh, with a backhoe, so that was pretty exciting. Well, that's exciting, but I bet it doesn't match what you're doing today. Oh, just to ride into campus and see everybody tailgating and getting ready and, and uh, all the excited fans out there. Uh, it's a great day to be a 49er. That's wonderful. And so you've been all around campus today, but uh, I know that you're excited about being able to see the kickoff as well, right? Oh, so excited for the kickoff. We've been going around sampling the different food at the tailgating, and uh, uh, but we're, we can't wait for kickoff. That's great. Well, I will let you get onto your seats then, but thank great. you so much for stopping by and talking with us. Great. Thank you. with Joel Shelton. Good morning, Joel. How are you? Doing great. Hope you are. We are. We're really excited. So tell me how you're connected with the school, first of all. Well, I'm class of 97. All right. Um, Bachelor of Fine Arts with a graphic design degree. <laughs> um, excited to be here, here with uh, some old alum that we got together with for this first inaugural game. There's only one first one, That's right? right? So That's here right. we are. Okay. Well, what do you think our chances are today? I think we're going to I think we're going to win, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah. Of we're course we are. We've been undefeated. What's the point in losing <laughs> Let's one? Let's continue that. Let's keep it undefeated. Good. Well, I don't want to keep you away from the festivities, but thanks for coming out today and go Niners. Absolutely, go Niners. Tim is the former SGA president from back in 2009, and he was the one that led the effort for the student approval for the football team. So Tim, great to see you here today. First thank of all, you. thank you very much for those efforts. Thank you. And, um, and But I think it's important to note that you are here from New York City right now. I right? am, I am. I flew a long way to get down here, but I wouldn't miss it for the world. So happy to be here. Well, that's great. We're thrilled to have you here. So I understand you've kind of been around campus a little bit today, seeing a bunch of your old college buddies and kind of checking it out. 
What have uh, you spotted so far? Uh, a, a lot of changes. There's a lot of uh, there's a few new buildings that I haven't seen. There's a few new things around. Uh, a few of us were reminiscing about the old track that used to be now where the student union is and all the things that used to be here. And we all just can't believe how much it's changed in such a short amount of time. But I also understand you're a little bit involved with some alumni efforts up in New York. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, we've uh, started uh, the first uh, regional alumni chapter up in New York, and uh, you know. There's quite a lot of alumni and they're very energized in New York and uh, it's going pretty well. Well, great. Well, it's so nice to see you. Thank you again for your efforts with the students and I hope you have a great time today. I think we would all say go Niners. That's right, go Niners. with Phil Dubois and Lisa Dubois, the Chancellor. I know you are excited that this day is finally here. <laughs> well, this has been a family affair, both within our family and the university family for the last seven years. So it's great to see it come to pass and uh, see all the students here, alumni, community members, everybody's really excited. And Lisa, I know you've been very involved in the um, in the drumline oh. arc, and I heard them perform a little bit this morning, a little private recital right. for right. Jane Johnson. <laughs> so what, have you been able to hear them yet this morning? Oh, we hear them every morning oh. from our window. We hear them practicing every morning, and they are phenomenal. They're all UNC Charlotte students. We they are so excited to be here. Surprises, but what's been most gratifying has been that the three things that we wanted to see happen here. We wanted to see a complete collegiate experience. We wanted to see our alumni engaged in the university, and we wanted to bring the community out. We've done all of that, yep. and it'll only grow from here. And that's been the great thing to see the way in which your plans actually come to pass. I mean, it's all been great the way the community has wanted to make this successful, and uh, I think today we've done that. Well, thank you so much, both of you, for giving me a little bit of time sure. this morning. Great. And go Niners! Go, go Niners. Niners! Congratulations. It was years ago and we realized how the university was growing so rapidly and how uh, they needed support and we liked the direction that they were, the university was going in and so we decided to try to do our little part and create something that might be helpful to others here at the university. Mrs. Harney and other donors like her have made the commitment to 
you know, support the education of someone that they don't even know. And I think that's so selfless and so inspiring that, um, that I know it's going to echo throughout my life. Everybody in the community could uh, benefit from supporting the university and allowing the university to be more supportive of the community. I just want to thank you so much for this. I mean, I was so honored to find out that I was the recipient of the scholarship and I can't tell you what it means to me. It's, it's made my education possible this year. It really energizes me to see you and to know where you're coming from and where you're going. I think your future sounds really bright and unique. I hope as you go along, you'll uh, understand what the university has done to help you and that you will, in some way, some form, try to get back to the university. It was a project two years in the making. UNC Charlotte students designed and built a net zero solar powered house. As they compete for top honors in the solar decathlon competition for 2013, let's take a look at their final project. Welcome to Urban Eden, where you can enjoy garden living in a thriving city. Urban Eden was designed for Charlotte, North Carolina, a new south city with a metro population of 2.2 million. The UNC Charlotte team values the benefits and reduced carbon footprint of an urban lifestyle. With easy access to businesses, cultural sites, parks, and public transportation. And as an urban infill project, Urban Eden has a small physical footprint too. But life in the city doesn't mean you have to give up the enjoyment of nature. We value the peace of a private garden as much as the bustle of a vibrant city. So we created a home that brings nature right into the heart of downtown. Our design begins with urban materials glass, steel, and concrete. But these materials are not ordinary. The glass is highly insulated and triple glazed. The steel is 94% recycled, and our concrete, well, that's just plain revolutionary. A geopolymer cement mixture developed at UNC Charlotte reduces carbon emission by up to 90%. Since traditional concrete is responsible for 5 to 8% of the world's greenhouse gases, that's a big deal. The geopolymer is durable and dense, and our insulated walls keep city noise and extreme temperatures out, creating a comfortable living environment. But they also contain a secret weapon against energy consumption. Embedded in the walls is a system of tiny tubes through which water can flow. On a summer day, the concrete walls gradually soak up heat. Once the sun goes down, cool water begins to flow through the tubes, removing the heat and carrying it up to the roof, where a heat exchanger releases the heat into the night sky. Let's go inside. Everything about Urban Eden's design is intended to connect you to the outdoors. The ashwood floors, treated with heat instead of chemicals, flow from inside to outside rooms. Eco-friendly laminated bamboo is used for furniture, cabinetry, and paneling inside and out. But the best feature is the southern wall of glass. Views of the garden and natural light fill the house. In the winter, sunlight pours through the glass to warm the house. In the summer, the glass is shaded by the PV panels that generate Urban Eden's energy, which are mounted on a movable rack on the roof. And the doors open wide so that in good weather, the indoor and outdoor spaces become one. A vertical garden provides privacy, beauty, and even food. Reflecting ponds collect runoff from the slanted roof, providing rainwater for the plants. Adaptable furniture makes for versatile living indoors and out. A one-bedroom, single-family home Urban Eden comfortably accommodates a couple. Dual income, no kids, or empty nesters. A Murphy bed hidden behind the TV cabinet provides space for overnight guests. Residents can be proud that their furniture, floors, counters, and paint are eco-friendly. Likewise, the utilities in the home are low impact and high efficiency. Easily powered by the 8.7 kilowatt photovoltaic panel array. Urban Eden promotes sustainable living in the heart of a growing city. We made this gift because we wanted to do something uh, for the university that would last forever. So we called it the Founder Scholarship. Uh, the SIM chapter here in uh, Charlotte is only about two years old, and we were looking for something that would uh, make an impact. We were looking for something that would help us develop the next generation of information technology professionals. 
So we thought, what better way than to uh, endow a scholarship? Receiving a scholarship um, helps in many ways. First, of course, and most obvious is financially. Um, it really helps in that um, I don't have to get that full-time job in order to, to sustain myself. Um, I can focus primarily on my schoolwork. In addition to that, it, it's, it goes beyond financial. It's that little bit of extra pat on the back, that little bit of extra encouragement that, um, that really keeps a person moving along and, and focused on the goal ahead. What's really interesting about uh, Charlotte is that we've got such a giving community. Uh, but sometimes it takes a little more than just uh, you know, writing, opening a checkbook. Uh, they need to be aware of what those, those dollars go for. So I think that if we can take a moment to say, okay, we've got Nick here, and we've got someone that will be a technology leader in the next generation, that's what we need to convey to the rest of the folks in Charlotte and out around the area to, uh, to encourage them to donate. This university has been great for me. The faculty here um, are always here to lend a hand. For instance, the scholarship that, that the SIM uh, provided to me um, was brought to my attention by one of the faculty members. I would recommend this school to anyone. What everybody wants to do is to make sure that they leave some kind of a lasting legacy. You know, it could be our daughter and our grandchildren uh, or the work we did. But one way to do that was to establish an endowed nursing scholarship out here. Um, and because I'm a PA and work in emergency medicine and Nancy retired as a nurse, this was the ideal scenario, which was to help someone um, get through their nursing education. So she retired from nursing. She wants to make sure that other folks have the opportunity to step into nursing. The most rewarding part of that scholarship and I'll let Nancy talk about this, but it's the opportunity to meet the student nurse who gets to receive it and we get a chance to meet them. Well, I enjoy meeting the recipient because I like to see what she's doing, um, what she's interested in, what her goals for the future are, and I think it just seems a little more personal to me or to, to both of us to be able to really see the person and to see that this person is benefiting from something that we're actually contributing to. Some people think they have to have a lot of money in order to give money, and we don't have a lot of money. We've, um, like I said, we just wanted to be able to do something, and once we found out we didn't have to give $25,000 or $50,000 or something like that in order to help someone out here. And Nancy and I are middle class people, but I think what it is is being able to put a priority on wanting to make something happen that benefits somebody else. And no matter how much or how little money you make, you can do that if you set that aside and make it a priority. You know, 30 years from now, when we're probably gone from this earth, people are gonna be able to get a Jim and Nancy Health Scholarship and they're gonna ask, who the heck are those guys? And they may not know who we are, but they'll know that somebody cared enough 30 years previously to go ahead and establish a scholarship to help them get through school. I believe that a student uh, can make better use of the time on campus, uh, both on an academic basis and on a social basis for learning the skills that are going to be needed for success later on. And so I would like to, uh, at least in some way, pass forward the help that I got in the hopes that a student will, uh, one of these days, be out in the working world and perhaps pass it forward again. It's opened up an opportunity for me to be social and concentrate on my academics. It's also been a motivation for me just because to who much is given, much is required. So it's been pushing me, you know, knowing that, you know, I'm being watched, you know, with many eyes on me right now. And I also think that it's good for people to, when they can see someone like Isaac, who's succeeding and doing well in school, it gives you pleasure right back. It's not just that you're doing something for him, he's doing something for us too. I'm trying to get as much knowledge as possible right now about succeeding in academics. Also venturing out into other venues as far as you know, military goes. I'm trying to also you know, just provide an example for, I guess, other friends and family members. Helping the university with scholarship funds provides one an opportunity to pay forward some of the things that have been done for us. So, 
We're helping others. We're pooling our efforts with a number of other donors uh, to increase the effect of those efforts. When it comes to 49ers football, head coach Brad Lambert wants the number 49 jersey to mean something special. That jersey is going to change on a game-to-game -game basis, and nose tackle Larry Ogunjobi was chosen to be the first 49 in football history. The coaches, we're sitting around for a year and a half with no players, and and you know 49 is a pretty big number around here, and so we just thought you know it'd be kind of cool to save that number, not give it to anybody, and then you know do something different with it. So that's kind of where that evolved from, and then. Uh, you know, we, we got some some words out here that mean a lot to us, and so we put that on the back of the jersey, and we just want it to be not necessarily the guy that is the best player on the team or plays the best, but kind of embodies a little everything. You know, he's taking care of his business on the field, off the field, and and represents our university in a you know first class manner. So that's kind of our thought there. Coach Lambert pulled me aside. He said we need to talk. And at first, I thought I was in trouble. But then afterward, he said he wants me to be the first 49. So I, I felt I was honored, it was a blessing, and I'm glad he let me wear it. I heard that it was gonna be, become a tradition now, where like, you know, if you do get in practice and you do what you're supposed to do, they'll let you wear the 49 jersey. And it was a real blessing for them to select me. Well, grit's something that, you know, you, you gotta set your goals for long term, and you gotta persevere, and you gotta push through, and. That's just part of our gold standard, and uh, it may be opportunity this week, it may be leadership, it may be determination, but those are just kind of the, the terms that, that we came up with to, you know, this, we're trying to lay this foundation and, you know, you got to have some grit to you to, to see this thing through. We're not just, you know, taking up blocks, especially not in this defense. He wants us, you know, try to make plays and, you know, keep the linemen off our linebackers so they can make plays too, and, you know, just be the focal point. Hopefully I'm doing something right, so I'm just going to keep, you know, working hard, grinding, trying to set a example for everybody else and just show that, you know, hard work and dedication takes you where you need to go. Thanks once again for joining us. You can see more on the web at inside.uncc.edu and all of our segments are on YouTube. In the meantime, we look forward to seeing you next time right here inside UNC Charlotte.